Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Lewis and if you don't know me, I make videos on home automation and smart home tech, as well as open source software and anything tech related I find interesting. So if that sounds like something you'd be into, please consider subscribing. But today I am amped for this video because we are looking at object detection using camera feeds within Home Assistant. I'm super amped for this video because I get to talk about some of my favorite subjects and that is Home Assistant, which is obviously a staple of this channel object detection, which is something I've always been interested in. And also I get to showcase and talk about some amazing work from the community. But before all that, I want to say thank you to everyone who has been supporting the channel, either through liking, watching, and of course, subscribing. We recently hit a thousand subscribers, which is insane to me, something I never thought I would get to. We actually hit that uh, maybe two weeks ago or so. So it's just absolutely amazing. And I can't thank you enough for all the support. When I made my first video, I actually said if I got 100 subscribers to subscribe to the channel, then I would keep doing it. But if I didn't get that number, then I wouldn't make any more videos. I set that number thinking that I would never in a million years get to that and I would be safe from making any more videos. <laughs> but of course, here we are. Anyways, let's get on with this video. I'm gonna try and keep this video as short as possible. We all know I can ramble on and create 20 minute long videos. So let's see how we actually do by the end of this one. So today we're looking at object detect. Why is that so hard to say? Object detection. So today we're looking at how to enable object detection for any camera feed within Home Assistant. This will give you access to advanced functionality, smarter notifications, as well as just generally being fun to play with. We're gonna be using a Docker image from user Snowzack called Dudes, or Dedicated Open Object Detection Service. <laughs> I'm not saying that every time. So we're gonna be using Dudes. And essentially what Dudes is, is a REST API for TensorFlow that allows you to use TensorFlow located on another machine. So you can basically send images to this API and it will respond with the detections. Normally to use TensorFlow, it would be located on the same machine as your image source, so camera or video feed. But in this case, Dudes allows us to use TensorFlow located on another machine or over the network. And for those of you that don't know, TensorFlow is a open source library that allows you to train neural networks. And if all that sounded like absolute nonsense, I don't blame you. What I'm gonna show you basically allows you to take a video or camera feed and detect people or even objects like trucks or cars from it. So why might you want to do object detection? Well, we all know that traditional security camera motion detection can often lead to loads of false positives, like trees blowing in the background. So what if we could make that a little bit smarter? Object detection allows you to do that by only picking out the objects that you want to see moving, such as a human in the frame. This allows you to keep the false positives down and only alert if a person is detected on your property, for example. But anyways, I said we were gonna try and keep this short, so let's dive in and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so to get started, all we're gonna need is access to Home Assistant, access to the Home Assistant command line, and also we're gonna need a camera, which you can see I've got set up in my Home Assistant dashboard here. Um, this is actually connected to a Raspberry Pi camera and I've just enabled a motion JPEG stream into Home Assistant. But you can use any camera, like your outdoor security camera for this purpose. If we take a look at my lovely screen, you can see here that I have set up a basic camera within Home Assistant, and that's this camera over here. And then if we jump into the config of our Home Assistant instance, you can see that I just have a very basic um, configuration set up with our camera stream. So all in all, pretty basic there. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is to pull the latest image from Docker. Head over to the command line, and then we're gonna do docker pull snowzack. Oh. If we do that, and then docker is then gonna download the latest image from um, the web and that'll take a couple of minutes just depending on your connection speed. Once that's done, we're gonna then start up the Docker image with the following command. The dash P8080 basically just tells the Docker image which port to start up the web UI on. Go ahead and hit enter on that and then you can see that our Docker image is now running and it gives us the message that the API is listening. Go ahead and hit control C, which might seem counterintuitive, but we're gonna start it up in its own container. Do Docker 
container ls a to show to show all docker containers and you can see that our dude's image is at the top grab the container id and then do docker start and then paste in that id to start the container heading back over to home assistant we're then going to create a new image processing config so go ahead and type image processing and it's going to be on platform dudes we need to provide a url for this which is going to be http enter the full ip address of the home assistant instance that you're running on don't use localhost r127 it won't work for eight and we use the port 8080 as defined in the last step we also need to provide the name of the detector so go ahead and hit detector default and finally, we're gonna provide the name of the camera that we're gonna use for the detection. You can see up here, I've given my camera the name PyCam. So that's the one we're gonna use. Create a new entity ID, and then put in camera.pycam. Head over to the configuration tab, and then into server controls. Make sure to check your config every time we restart, just to make sure you haven't made any issues, and click the restart button. Once restarted, you're gonna then want to head over to developer tools. Head down to our new image processor and you can see that it's actually finding some matches. So you can see it thinks it finds a laptop, a person and various other things. But this isn't very useful to us as is because it's not actually telling us where on the image they are. And also it's a little bit noisy. Let's go ahead and correct that by heading back to our config. And then the first change we're gonna to want to make is to output to a file using the file out parameter. Enter the file out parameter and we're going to save it to config slash www slash dudes.jpg. Before we restart then head back to the home assistant command line and we need to make sure that that folder is created that we just specified. So browse into the config folder using the cd config command. And then if we look here, the, we have no www folder. If you don't have this folder, then just go ahead and create it with the make dir command. If you do have it, then you can just skip this step. Head back to Home Assistant, and then we're gonna restart the configuration again. Make sure to check your config before doing so. Once restarted, then duplicate the tab, or create a new tab, and this time we're gonna edit the URL to say local slash dudes.jpg. So the same file name that we created in the config. Hit enter and you can see that this time uh, image comes up that has lots of yellow boxes and just generally looks a mess, but you can pick out some of them. So you can see there, it thinks it detects a person over by beside me. And it also has a very other, various other boxes for, <laughs> it thinks it detects a bed, a tie, a chair so you can see that dudes is working however it's not very useful to us as is it's a little bit noisy let's go ahead and correct that it's also not very useful because the image clearly isn't moving it's just a static image so let's fix that also so back in the plat in the camera we're going to create a new platform which is going to be generic and then we give that a name of um, let's call this one dudes dudes cam and then for the url we're going to enter the location of our jpeg so we go still image url and then we go back to the picture and just copy the location of that jpeg file paste that in and then we can go ahead and restart once again once restarted head back to your lovelace dashboard and then we're going to create a second camera click on edit dashboard and click on the plus button and then we're going to create a picture entity and this time from our for the entity we're going to click on dudes cam which is the one we just created give that a name of dudes we can clear the image path and we can select dudes cam as our camera entity and change that to live click on save and that creates a new camera entity within home assistant if we open up the camera you'll see that it's still a static image it's not refreshing very often if we wait about 10 seconds or so we you will see that the image will refresh so there we go but that's not very useful to us because it's um quite slow to update so we can go ahead and configure that in the config 
go back into Visual Studio Code and we want to change the processing time for dudes from the default 10 seconds maybe down to around two seconds or so. We can do that by changing the scan interval. So the scan interval is how often that the dudes platform will run. The default is 10 seconds, but you can configure that down to about two seconds. TensorFlow can be quite hardware intensive, so you sometimes need a little bit of powerful hardware to run. You can run it on a Raspberry Pi using TensorFlow Lite, but the frame rate you're gonna get basically depends on the performance of your hardware. I know that this platform is currently able to detect an image in 0.3 seconds, so I could comfortably set my scan interval a lot lower than that. But for the sake of this, let's just set two seconds. If we save that and restart once again, and if we open up our camera, you can see that the image is refreshing every two seconds now. It's still not very useful because of the amount of objects that it thinks it's detecting on screen. So let's go ahead and correct that. Head back into the code. And the first minimum thing we can do is set a confidence level. So the confidence level is basically a percentage from zero to 100 of how sure TensorFlow is that the object is what it thinks it is. So for our confidence score, let's go ahead and enter 60, which means that TensorFlow will only, or dudes will only report if it thinks the percentage is 60 or above that the object is what it thinks it is. And now opening up our dudes cam, you can see we're getting much more reliable results. So it's scanning, so it's highlighting the fact that there is a laptop on screen and it's also highlighting me as a person, which I'm glad it does. You can see there's also the confidence rating right next to the object. So the laptop has a confidence rating of 83 and it's around 65% sure that I am a person. This is obviously because of the angle of the camera. It's not exactly ideal for detection right now, but if we move it around, we get much better results. But you can see that it's giving a strong confidence score for the laptop. Okay, so I've grabbed a couple of more objects. Let's see what it can detect. Let's change the angle of the camera. So there you can see if I hold up the phone, it correctly identifies it as a cell phone. Let's try another one if we bring in this. Okay, so it's correctly identifying that as a cup. What about if we bring in this? We'll get that. Okay, so it's kind of getting that as a cup. It perhaps doesn't have the correct model for that. You can also set individual confidence scores for different objects, and let me show you how to do that. Or you can eliminate objects completely and only look for certain objects. Perhaps you only want to look for cars or people. And so you can do that with the labels function in the config. Go ahead and create a new label, give it a name of person. So the name is the object you want to detect. So it needs to be exactly as it is in the model. So person, we can enter there. And we can also change the individual confidence factors for those um, specific objects instead of using the global confidence one. So we could set a confidence level of 70% for people and perhaps we can also create a car and we could give that a confidence of say 50. With this new config, this means that dudes is now only going to report for people with a confidence of 70% or cars with a confidence of 50%. All other objects will be discarded regardless of their confidence factor. This just saves on processing time and makes performance a little bit quicker. There's also no point in looking for certain objects like cups if the camera is in the middle of your drive, for example. It's highly unlikely you would be picking up cups there and also why would you want to? And so now you can see it's only reporting on one thing in the screen, which is me, because I am a person with <laughs> confidence rating of 73%. So there we go guys, that is how to do object detection with any camera that you have in Home Assistant. Some further automations you could create from this are to notify you when a person is on your property when your house is empty. You could also send the image in a notification straight to your phone so you just can swipe down and see instantly what the notification was. You really can open up a ton new possibilities and hopefully help you to increase your security around your house.
or you can just use it for fun. The good thing about it is, is you can train your own models if you want. So anything that isn't detected by the built-in detections, you can actually create your own detections for any objects that you might have. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick. Was it quick? I'm sure it probably took ages. But I hope you enjoyed this quick video and you learned something new and you can take it and apply it to your own home automation system. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe and let me know your feedback down below, as well as let me know any other videos you want to see in the future. Thank you to everybody who is supporting me and supporting the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.